I, I do think that a really great domain and application area for AI is in managing the cost benefits in a very explicit way. So we, 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 get the, we, we can get a sense for, even through simulations in advance of fielding technologies, the actual real world costs with a real world fielding in the open world versus always the trend to increase new expense. So just like in AI, we've had layers of reflection that make sure that the combinatorial explosion of planning algorithms is, 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 is managed. We should apply these same ideas to cost managing the costs in healthcare explicitly as a, <clears throat> a very important role, not just diagnosis, not just uh, uh, better disease management, but also managing the costs and benefits of technologies and understanding them. And we can imagine new kinds of, of triaging tech, technologies, uh, new ways to have automation to assist uh, uh, human physicians, uh, especially at, per, per Wendell's comment, places where the technology is not available. And I wanted to roll a brief video of a, of, of a system we built several years back. Now, you'll, you'll see something that's relatively clunky, but try to remove the clunky aspect of it from your minds because we can be much more fluid and smooth about these technologies these days especially. But we're actually going to show how we fielded uh, a, what's called a Bayesian network model um, uh, built by uh, who was known, uh, someone who was known as the Pope of Pediatrics, Richard Berman, uh, one of the co-editors co years ago of the Nelson's technology, uh, I mean, um, textbook in, uh, in pediatrics. Uh, and he built about uh, 15 to 20 models, each looking for a chief complaint and then helping to diagnose the problem in a, in a, in a, in a toddler or baby. Uh, and let me show you this, this example of what happens when we, we try to apply this with a dialogue model. Hi. Namaste. Bob Coswagant, hi. Thanks for coming to the triage kiosk. I'm in touch with the best doctors in the world. Are you here for your child? For yourself? For my child. So how can I help you? He's been having diarrhea. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Mono. And how old are you? Six. So, six years old, right? Almost seven. Okay. Seven years old. Have you felt nausea? I don't know. I'm sorry. Have your child been vomiting at all? No. Okay. So let's see. Has there been a fever? A slight. Have you been feeling tired lately? Yes. Let's see. How about abdominal pains? He's not complaining about that. Has your tummy been hurting? Yes. Oh, I'm really sorry. I hope it will feel better soon. Okay. Have your child been losing weight lately? No. That's okay. Have you noticed whether your child's stool looks funny? Is it black or darker than usual? It's darker than usual. Okay, let's see. Considering everything you've told me, I'd like to schedule an appointment with the doctor, just to be sure. However, not to worry, I'm not that concerned at this point. Can you bring your child to see the doctor this Friday at 10 a.m.? Yes. Great. Hope you'll feel better. And we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Now, that is a nice example of reach <laughs> that would otherwise probably not be possible. Right. And I think it's also a nice example of that idea of the decision process, that if it's not necessary, then it shouldn't have to come to the hospital. It may turn out that he ate a little bug or something, and then it's fine. But if it's necessary, then the additional costs, both the uh, emotional cost as well as the financial costs, are worth uh, bringing the child in with the, with the mother. So I think this is a nice example of how to make the decision earlier and sort out many of the unnecessary hospital visits that really also drive up uh, the costs and are also just really, really stressful to people.